Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hello, friends. I'm hoping that you're having a great day already. My name is Mohammed Faridi. I'm, the, I'm your host on the show that we call it Forsaking My Father's Religion. Today, I have the honor to um, introduce to you Pastor Sharam Hadian. He's a former Muslim from the country of Iran. And um, this is going to be an awesome conversation. I, I promise you that. We already have been, uh, the last 10 minutes before this show, we have a great uh, conversation in regard to a church in Minnesota. But uh, uh, I have invited Pastor Sharam to come on this show to share his testimony of how God has rescued him from the Islamic God of Islam known as Allah and brought him out of the darkness to the kingdom of his beloved son. Pastor Sharam, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that you accepted my invitation to come on this show. This is going to be an awesome day. Brother Faridi, thank you so much. Uh, it, it's such a blessing and honor to be able to be on your program. I'm, I'm so uh, grateful and excited for your ministry and what the Lord is doing there and just uh, grateful to be a part of it and to be able to share the story of uh, what the Lord did in my life uh, in, in, in the journey uh, over the last 24 years. Amen. That is awesome. It's just, uh, it's always an honor um, to see a Muslim that has converted to Christianity and now is walking with the Lord and also has understood the call on his life and is sharing it with others. It's just an honor to have you, Pastor. Uh, all of your information is in the description of this video. Uh, people that are going to are watching now or going to watch this this program they can connect to you uh, to you on uh, the website is on the description and um, um, now it's it's a good time to like this video share it with others and subscribe we're growing our channel is growing we have uh, pastor uh, this past uh, uh, week we reached over one and a half million views Praise it's God. a milestone Praise it's been an amazing thing so pastor please I'm not gonna uh, talk too much today. I just want to hear your testimony of what the Lord has done. Tell us where you come from, how how you grew up as a Muslim, and uh, the rest of this stuff. Well, brother, um, as 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 uh, very similar to your backstory, I was born in Iran, uh, grew up um, in a split family because my dad's side of the family um, was not as devout or fundamentally following Islam. My dad went to the military academy under the Shah of Iran from the age of 18. So he was very involved in that world. <clears throat> but my mom's side of the family was very devout. Uh, they would take us as a young child. I remember going to Masjid, to mosque, and, and, and uh, um, <laughs> never knowing what they were praying, you know, never understanding what they were praying because they were praying in Arabic. And, and, and I remember from a young child thinking, I don't understand. We speak Farsi. I don't speak Arabic. But why uh, do you have to pray in Arabic? I never understood this because uh, I was taught that the God of Islam is the creator, right? That he created the heavens and the earth. So I thought, well, if, if, if this God created me, um, shouldn't he understand my language? Shouldn't he understand what language I speak? So that was one of the questions I had from a very young age growing up. But uh, from also a very young age, Shara, brother, I, Pastor Sharam, I, that is the exact question I had. That is mm. the exact. Like, mom, if God has created us in the Farsi, in the Persian language, why do we need to communicate or pray in Arabic? And then as, as, as soon as this came out of my uh, my mouth when I was six, seven, eight years old, maybe even younger. And then she quoted me the Quran, chapter 5, verse 101. A good Muslim mm. submits, a good Muslim yeah. surrenders. If you ask too many questions, it leads to doubt, and a doubtful, doubtful Muslim will burn in hell. That's right. So she scared the hell out of me. Yeah. I mean, that is the truth. Yes. That's right. And, That's I right. Saw, and I said, I will not ask questions because I didn't want to go to hell and be burned by Allah. That's right. Isn't that amazing? Just the amount of fear absolutely. that it, we grew up it with. It is. Go yeah, ahead, absolutely. No, no, absolutely. And so that's exactly right, is that uh, you, you don't want to have unbelief and you don't want to become an unbeliever because of the consequence. And so, but what was interesting at the same time that this was going on, because I kept also thinking that, you know, look, our, our culture, the Persian culture goes back much further back than Islam. 
I mean, we were Persians long before Islam was ever conceived of, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was not sitting right with me. But I also had questions from a young child about um, death. I, I, I can't explain maybe why the fascination was there, but I do know I was having dreams. Mm -hmm. And I would have dreams from a young age about God. And it was sort of this imagery of white. And, but I didn't know who it was. And when I would ask my parents, the two questions that I would frequently ask them, and I remember as early as probably five years old, I would say, uh, number one, um, I want to know God. Um, how can I know God personally? I wanted to have a relationship. And as you know, brother, there, the Quran teaches that uh, the God of Islam is unknowable, that, that mm. we cannot know him personally, that he's not a personal God. So that never sat right with me. That, that, that troubled me. And then the more, more important question was, I would ask them, um, if I die, how would I know that I go to heaven because I was being taught, like you said, there was so much fear that it was about you, you have to continue to please Allah and to do good. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, he can condemn you to eternal hellfire. And you don't ever know in this life. You don't ever know unless, and my parents never wanted to tell me the unless, which I found out later, was, well, unless if you're a shaheed, if you are That's martyred, right. well, then you can know. But other than Shahid, uh, there is no guarantee. You, you say, inshallah, right? Which, which we don't say, right? We were talking about that before the break. But in Islam, they say, well, it's the will of Allah. If he wills it, eh. That's it. And that's it. And I, I thought, well, that's not good enough. Because then if I die, so this sat with me. And then, of course, what happened was my dad being in the military, uh, in 1976, 77, he began to see that things were shifting very quickly. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to get political, but, you know, the United States got a new president. Jimmy Carter uh, turned on the Shah of Iran. The relationship was was broken. My dad was a liaison officer. He was in the army of Iran. He liaison with the army of uh, the United States Army. So he would routinely come over and they would do joint training. Well, all of that stopped because when Carter came in president, he ended everything. Everything stopped. So he was beginning to see the military was changing. Things were changing in Iran. There was this kind of communist Marxist undertoning universities, all this stuff. So in 1977, he took early retirement and he was planning to get us out in 1979 because we were, we were going to sell things. And then in 1978, things began to really heat up. And so uh, I remember my dad coming home in, the, in, in, in October of 1978. He sat us down and he said, we need to leave right away. We're going to try to get everything together as fast as we can. And we're going to get out of here. Uh, dad, what about our, our, our house, our apartment, our cars, every, every, everything we left behind? And early December of 1978, we boarded a plane out of Tehran. Uh, leaving everything behind, uh, not knowing the timing. I, I didn't le learn till later that many of the Iranians who left Iran at that time, those were some of the last commercial flights that left. And then beginning of February, uh, as the Shah was out of the country for medical treatment, they committed what I call a coup, uh, not a revolution, but a coup. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's it. And, and, and so um, I remember going back to Iran one more time uh, in 1980. Uh, but then after that, what happened was uh, the reason we went back to Iran is because my mom in 1979 had decided to go back to Iran mm -hmm. because she was a school teacher and she wanted to, she had about nine or 10 months left to finish her retirement. And right at that time, if most people remember, in uh, September of 1979, they stormed the U.S. embassy and they took the American hostages yeah. and everything got really heated. So the United States government uh, rescinded her visa. We had come to the United States on a visa. We weren't even residents. We had come on a visa and they would not allow her to leave Iran and come back to the United States. And I ended up not seeing my mom 
for brother for two and a half years. Wow. And we end up eventually immigrating to Canada, uh, and she came to Canada. But this was a journey, and I'll turn it back to you. This was a journey from that age, from the age of five when I had those questions, mm -hmm. to then witnessing Iran, Persia fall to Islam in 1979, mm -hmm. now govern under an Islamic theocracy, and then seeing all these Iranians who had never lived under Islam and, and learning more about Islam and realizing that this doesn't sit well in my spirit, in my soul, in my heart. Um, so I began at, uh, as a late teenager, early 20s, uh, kind of exploring different religions. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, when I would explore Christianity, there was always a problem in that I never could find bold Christians that would ever tell me what the Bible actually said. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was sort of um, always a mixture. Mm -hmm. Until the Lord... Uh, uh, by the way, when we left Iran, we came to Atlanta, Georgia, and we were there until we moved to Canada. Uh, in 1998, almost 20 years to the day, when we moved to Atlanta in 1978, the Lord moved me back to Atlanta, Georgia for work. Mm -hmm. And now I'm not, a, I'm not a Christian. I'm not saved. I'm still, uh, you know, uh, by, uh, at least by name only, I'm still a, a Muslim. I'm still following Islam. But I have all these questions. I have all these doubts. And that was where in Atlanta, Georgia, the Lord put in my path some bold Christians Hallelujah. that actually began to answer my questions um, about Christianity and, the, and Islam. And um, that's where the, the rest of the journey picks up. But I, I want to turn it back to you. And if you have any questions or anything before we move on. So, so uh, I'm post-Islamic revolution, Pastor. I was born in 84. That's five years after. Uh, I was born into the war between Iranian and Iraqis. Uh, Shias killing Sunnis and both claiming that they're going to paradise. Mm -hmm. When I was born, um, I remember... Um, we had tapes on our windows in the city of Tehran because of the bombers and the jets that went over mm -hmm. and, and uh, 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 threw rockets uh, on major buildings and, and so on and so forth. So they called our generation the generation of war. Mm -hmm. But your generation is one uh, prior to me because you, you saw the, 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 the monarch or the king of Iran and the prosperity of Iran of the, of the, or the Persia of those days. And then... Um, that turned, everything turned in 1979. And then we went from a free country that used to be very internationally open to all sort of trades and all sort of uh, prosperity and all sort of business and commerce in Middle East to all of a sudden, we went from that, a, a pro-West, pro-American, a pro-Israel country, all of a sudden to death to America and death to Israel and hostage situation. And of course, we went from a, a country that was open to, uh, we had women right, you could wear hijab or not wear hijab, that was your, on your choice, to all of a sudden mandatory hijab, Sharia law, to the, uh, to the brims, to the, uh, 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 and then the... Uh, the radicals of is the Islamic radicals got in charge in power. The Ayatollahs, the Mullahs, the Sheikhs, the Mosque, Imam all of a sudden had all the powers and they started enforcing Islam. So and 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 you're you saw before and after and you're watching all of this as a Muslim, and then you came to America across some Christians. And please tell us how that transition, what did they share? What what was that process of going through? Because I remember when I heard the first time about Jesus, I was totally shocked that every idea as a Muslim I had about Jesus, about Christianity, it was absolutely garbage. It was totally propaganda lies made up in Hollywood and made up in uh, Islamic Hollywoods and and. Um, and um, Islamic propaganda. Esau was a prophet. Esau failed. He couldn't uh, com com uh, uh, fulfill the, his mission as a prophet. So Allah has to send Muhammad to clean up after Esau. 
And then I heard about Christianity and I heard he's the son of God. He's the savior of the world. He has died for my sin. It was just not even the same person. Right. They weren't even talking about the same person. So please walk us through that journey and tell us what happened. Well, first of all, uh, going back to what you said about Iran, uh, it, it was heartbreaking. And it, to this day is heartbreaking because um, there is a, I believe, certainly from a biblical perspective now as a Christian, when you read the Bible and you see the rich heritage of Persia and how God used Persia to come to the aid of the Jewish people time and time and time again, and how God blessed the Jewish people through Persia, um, it even too. grieves me more. It, 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 it grieves me even more witnessing what has happened to uh, our beloved Persia. And, and obviously, uh, I, you know, one of the uh, most amazing things that, that has happened is that before the 1979 coup or revolution, as they call it, uh, there was estimates that there was maybe only a few thousand, very few, right? Very few born again, not Armenian Christians, but born again, meaning like us, they were Muslim and they convert to Christianity. Mm -hmm. But uh, then, Pastor, I have heard yeah. that number um, on, a, on a survey that was done actually uh, 40 years ago by our ministry, between two to 400 converted from Islam to Christianity. So two to 400, according to those data that we collected 40 years ago, that's you right. could locate Iranian Muslims that converted to Christianity. That's right. That's small. That's small. Yeah, I mean, the numbers that I had heard was less than 1,000. Exactly. So that's small. And yet... As, the, uh, as Islam took a hold, as Sharia took a hold, as the theocracy took a hold, as now the Iranian people are being submitted for the first time, really, at least, at least in, in recent generations, really learning what Islam is, uh, then we see the movement of, of the gospel, we see the movement of the Holy Spirit, and today, uh, by every measure, you have in Iran, the fastest growing church, numerically speaking, right. on the planet mm -hmm. as a result of the movement of the underground churches and the movement towards discipleship making and not just church planting, which is another conversation. But going back to your question of um, because I was witnessing all these things in Iran and certainly uh, my dad, who was, you know, I would say uh, very lukewarm. You know, he, he, he was, I, I always said to my dad, dad, you, you, you're a, you're a, a good sinner. Like you claim to be a uh, Muslim, but you're a good sinner because you, you, you smoke, you drink alcohol, you eat pork, you don't pray. Like wh what, what version of Islam are you? You know, but anyway, my dad was very patriotic towards Iran. was very patriotic towards uh, the Shah. And, and of course to the, you could call it the heyday, right? That the, the fact that the Shah actually led what was called a white revolution to be able to get rid of Islam. He wanted to purge Iran of Islam. He wanted to purge Iran and take it back to its Persian identity. And of course, all that shifted. But um, so witnessing all that, now I'm exactly as you were, as I'm talking to these Christians and they're actually presenting what the Bible says about Christianity, about Jesus. I'm in the same boat. I'm like, wait a second. This is the absolute op Here I've been told that, oh, there's so much in common between Christianity and Islam. And I'm thinking the central figure in Christianity is, is Jesus Christ. And the central figure in Islam is Muhammad. Because as you said, the, the Quran, or according to his own, uh, only his own testimony, he is the final prophet of seven, of the seven major prophets. And so, uh, wait a second, this is the opposite there is no comparison between what I have learned about the prophets all the way back to Adam through Jesus, through Esau, and then of course Muhammad, to then what I'm learning about what these Christians are claiming about what the Bible says mm -hmm. about Jesus the Christ. So I want to know for myself. And so um, this one uh, uh, gal was actually one of my students. I was a coach at the time. And I asked her, I said, you know, you're a Christian. Um, what do you do? Well, I, I'm a computer programmer, but I want to go 
overseas and I want to tell people about Jesus Christ because I want to be a missionary. And I said, well, what does that really look like? Well, I, I want to go tell people what the Bible, I said, well, and I asked her this question and it kind of shocked her. I said, well, can you tell me? <laughs> and she was like, really? I said, yeah, I, I want to know. And then as she's telling me, and then subsequently, uh, within about a week or two, she connects me with a gentleman who ends up to this day being one of my spiritual fathers mm -hmm. and he still supports our ministry. And I met with him and I'm now telling them, look, this is what I've been taught about Christianity and everything that I was taught about Christianity, as you said, was garbage. Everything that I had been taught about Christianity from Islam mm -hmm. was a lie according to the actual Bible, because it was crazy. We actually met for the first time and he had told me, write your questions down about Christianity. And I did. And he said, listen, we're going to do two things. We're going to pray and we're going to ask the Holy Spirit because God has given us his Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, is going to lead us into all truth. And if you're seeking the truth, he will show you the truth. And I'm thinking, well, first of all, I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. There's no Holy Spirit. And number two, you're going to open this corrupt book because remember, yeah. Muslims are taught this book is corrupted. Mm -hmm. the, the Jews corrupted the Torah, the Old Testament. The Christians corrupted the Gospels, the New Testament. And poor Allah has got to save the day. I don't mean to be facetious by sending his final messenger, Muhammad, to save the day and correct everybody, right? So right. now you're going to open this corrupt book. Go ahead. And here's the crazy thing, Muhammad. He opens the book and he flips, as I'm asking questions, he flips to a chapter, to a verse, and this corrupt book is now answering my questions. That's right. Every question I had about knowing God, uh, is God knowable, is God personal, now I'm learning, wait a yes. second, God is a father. What? Islam teach it, taught me that Allah is not a father, nor can he be a son. Lam yalad balam yulat. That's Absolutely. right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. And so the last chapter of the Quran, they pray this in their daily prayers. Muslims pray this, right? At least 17 times every single day. And so now you're telling me in the Bible, it says God is our father mm -hmm. and he is noble and personal and intimate. Wait a second. Wait a second. And now this so-called corrupt book is answering my questions about salvation, about eternity. Oh, it is not based on works. Nothing I can do to earn it. And guess what? I can know on this side of eternity Correct. if I can be saved. I don't need to die and go to hell as Islam teaches and then hope that Allah will accept me. I can know on this side because now God sent his son. Wait a second. God has a son. You see, I mean, everything was absolutely just messing in a good way with my mind and with, I believe, and I'm beginning to realize, wait a second. These two cannot be compatible. Islam and Christianity cannot be compatible in any way, shape or form. They're the opposite. One is, uh, one has got to be from God and one has got to be not from God. Mm -hmm. So this was, was weighing in my heart. Uh, I then um, 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 began to continue to pray. Uh, this, this young lady had given me a tape to listen to of a, a Easter message. Uh, a church had preached a very apologetic message on the crucifixion and the resurrection. The evidence of, and here's another one, right? Because Surah chapter 4, 1, 5, uh, 1, 5, uh, 7, right? Uh, what does it teach us in Surah chapter 4? The Quran claims, the Quran claims mm -hmm. that Jesus never died on the cross. That's right. Mm -hmm. So now I'm learning that the way that God proved that Jesus was his son and that the way Jesus proved that he was God in the flesh that he went to the cross, all of this evidence for the crucifixion, mm -hmm. where Islam claims in Surah 4157, for a surety it never happened. It was made to appear. They believe, as you, I'm sure you've taught, that, that it was Judas that was on the cross, made mm -hmm. to look like, I always joke, I say it's like Mission Impossible, you know, when they have those masks and, uh, and, 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 and they, you know, uh, they look like somebody else. Oh, Allah put a mask on. 
on Judas to make it look like Jesus. Is that what we're talking about? That's, that's ludicrous, but that's what Muslim, that's what I was taught. Mm -hmm. So now not only does the, the Bible say that there's evidence and, and the, 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 the message went through Jewish historians, Roman historians, mm -hmm. uh, every out, even outside sources of the Bible that the, that the crucifixion is historical fact that Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. And then the other side of the tape, was on the evidence of the resurrection. That all of the evidence, all of the eyewitness testimony, again, inside the Bible and outside the Bible, mm -hmm. that this is irrefutable. And now, brother, Absolutely. one day I'm driving home from work and I'm still listening to this tape because uh, I had told this young lady who had given me the tape when she asked me the first time, did you listen to it? And I said, yes, I listened to it. And I actually said, this words came out of my mouth. I said, it was offensive. So she kind of got nervous. Uh-oh. Uh oh, because uh -oh, you know, you know, nowadays we can't offend the offend the Muslim. God forbid if we offend the Muslim with the truth. I said, no, 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 you misunderstand. It offended me because it challenged every single thing that I believed as a Muslim. Everything. <laughs> Everything is on the table. And so therefore I want to know the truth. I want to follow this truth. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I, I'm almost done, brother. I'm I'm, I'm driving in my car one Please. day. I'm still listening mm -hmm. to this tape, and here's the powerful part. And as I'm listening to this tape, I listen to it over and over and over and over again. I'm just saturating myself with the truth. And then, of course, uh, this gentleman, Bill, had given me a Bible. So now I'm actually going to the Bible myself, and I'm reading it for myself. And I'm like, okay. Uh, and then he said to me. Look, here is one translation, the NIV. Here's another translation, the New American. Here's another translation, the King James. And they're all saying the same thing. They're all, this is not corrupted. This is not what we've changed. It's all saying the same thing. And he said, if you want, you can even go and find thousands, 20 plus thousand manuscript copies of the New Testament. You can read it. You can go online. And so two things were weighing on me. One was intellectually Mm -hmm. I had to understand that Islam was not true and Christianity has evidence of truth. And then emotionally, I'm now realizing yeah. the God of the Bible is a father who loves me and created me for relationship, not some unknowable, you know, just do my bidding like Allah. But I want to know you. I want to love you. I want to have purpose in your life. And I want you to be mine for eternity. So as I'm listening to this tape, one day I'm driving home and all of a sudden, brother, I can't explain it. I just start weeping. I'm weeping so hard. I pull over to the side of the road because I thought I'm going to get in an accident and I can't stop crying. And I, I, I don't even understand what's going on now. Of course, I know that was the movement of that was the, the moment the Holy Spirit really got a hold of my heart. And I, I hear in my heart this, these words. Sharam, I have had my hand on you from when you were a child. I gave you those dreams. I've wanted to know you. I have pursued you. And I've now shown you the truth. Choose today whom you're going to serve. Amen. One way is true. One way is a lie. Choose today. Yes. And right there, brother, in that car, by myself, I prayed. And I called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Lord, I said, Lord Jesus, I believe every single thing that the Bible has said about you. Mm -hmm. I believe that you are the son of the living God. I believe that you are God in the flesh. I believe that you have come and you were sinless and you uh, laid your life down upon that cross mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as an atonement for me, for my sins. You, you were buried. You were raised from the dead and proving you are God and proving that there is no other way but through you. And right now, I, I want to follow you. I want to serve you. And that was June 1st of 1999, brother. And 24 years later, uh, by the grace of God, I have not wavered from that prayer mm -hmm. because the Lord showed me. And I have not wavered from exposing Islam mm -hmm. and trying to correct in our ministry, truth and love, the, all of the, the, the compromise of the gospel by engaging in this false evangelism with Muslims to teach them uh, we have common ground in the Bible and the Quran or somehow both common and yeah. all this stuff. So that, so that began the journey 
Last part I'll share, I'll turn it back to you. Within, uh, I, I, it was interesting because I, was ar- I had already accepted a job to move back to the Seattle area to be closer to my family who was in Canada. Uh, so uh, Bill uh, connected me with another gentleman, another mm-hmm. friend of his. They had evangelism ministry through their business. And I had 21 days. And of those 21 days before I left, uh, realizing urgency. And, and, and he kept saying, you're like a sponge. You're like a sponge. You are just hungry. And I said, absolutely. They met with me 17 of those 21 days to disciple me. And immediately when I got back to, when I got to Seattle, they connected me with a church over there that they knew in the Western Washington. And, um, uh, when I was at that church in three months, when I was at that church, one day that they were, uh, making an announcement about a, uh, they were looking for a youth pastor and, uh, with as new as a Christian I was, I felt mm-hmm. the calling of the Lord uh, that, that, that he's calling me to ministry. And uh, I went forward. I learned from the pastor that there was, a, there was a, a Bible school there. And three months later, I was enrolled. So within six months of getting saved, I was enrolled in Bible college. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, uh, by the grace of God, uh, got, uh, became, uh, got my, my, my degree in biblical ministry became a pastor in 2003, never thought, brother, brother, I never thought, if you had asked me before I was a Christian, what are the top thousand jobs you think you'd ever do yes. or careers or calling? I never thought I'd be a pastor. Mm-hmm. And yet that's what the Lord has had. Uh, of course, I've, I've had other um, careers as far as being a coach. I was a police officer. I ran mm-hmm. for office. Uh, you know, so I've done different other things, but the most important thing is being a follower and a disciple. Yes. Of the God of the universe, Jesus Christ, who is the one true God. Every other God is false. And Muslims Absolutely. need to know. Muslims need to know that there is no power in this God. He is a false God. Um, there is power, healing, salvation, hope in the God of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to have nightmares about hell mm-hmm. before I was a Christian. Mm-hmm. I would dream that I was falling and I'd wake up and it was black and I thought I've gone to hell. And I would wake up for real and realize that that was a dream. Brother, can I tell you in 24 years since I've been a Christian, I've never Hallelujah. had that nightmare one time. Hallelujah. Because now we know that we know that we know who we belong to. We know that the word of God is true and accurate. It has not been corrupted. God preserves his word, unlike Amen. the Quran that, that, that has been changed and changed and changed. God has preserved his word. Mm-hmm. And brother, thank you for the opportunity for me Absolutely. to be able to share that story so people can understand um, not only who God is, but also the falsehoods that we're dealing with today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Pastor. Just uh, caught a couple of things. Uh, when you talk about uh, in Islam, when you talk about eternity, you're talking about uh, something after this life, right. like it's going to be some unknown. This transcendent God, this unknowable God has this plans for you, but, but you will figure out after life. Most of the religions, are, of course, including Islam, that's the, the unknown, the uncertainties that they have in this life. It's postponed to the next one. We'll figure it out later. But in Christianity, um, the eternal life, that's the most beautiful thing. The eternal life, uh, uh, Jesus told us in John chapter 17, verse 3, that eternal life is knowing God. Mm-hmm. So if you cannot know God on this life, why would you want to know him on the next? Amen. If you don't want to spend time with God now, why would you be spending in the next? Beautiful thing about Christianity, this personal this noble, this this God that you can know, it is starts now. And then this knowledge of Him growing in this relationship with God, that is your eternal life. Amen. And Apostle Paul said, we're just going to pass from this life to the next. Now we are seeing dimly through mm-hmm. a glass, but you, we will be seeing clearly. Amen. That is Christianity. you just going to... And uh, in the book of John, chapter 8, Jesus said, you already passed from death to life 
now. Amen. It's nothing postponing an un, some uncertain future of whatever, what if, case saros. This is it. Christianity now, God resides in me. I have a relationship with him right now. And this, re this relationship will continue to the eternity. That is Amen. the most amazing thing about, about Christianity. And when, you, when we converted from Islam to Christianity, that what we didn't have that we were trying to fulfill with religion, God actually filled that place for us. And we know it. Amen. You, don't, you can't talk me out of Christianity anymore because no. it's not another theory. No. It's another no. religion. <laughs> Brother, that was, uh, uh, it was interesting you, you said that because on the tape that they were listening to, that I was listening to, on the second side of the tape, um, it was talking about evidence again. And for those who are listening, who uh, maybe they're listening to this and are, are, are still Muslims, and, and they said, well, I need evidence. Well, here, here is an evidence that was very powerful for me, and you just said it, mm -hmm. is that you can't convince me just like you couldn't convince the disciples who before Jesus was arrested and murdered, um, fled, right? They were all cowards, including Peter, right? <laughs> Lord, I'll never deny you. And Jesus even told him and predicted, no, you will deny me three times. So uh, they were all cowards. They, they all ran, they all hid. But now here's something significant. After the resurrection, now that they've seen the risen Jesus, they're all bold. That's They're it. all courageous. They're willing to die. They, they, they say, we will not deny what we have heard and what we have seen. Mm -hmm. So my question was, what happened to these guys? What? Because, you know, to die for a cause, okay. But, but when, when really push comes to shove, if the cause is true, you'll die. But if the cause is a lie, if, if he was never crucified, if he was never resurrected, mm -hmm. as Islam claims, as Islam claims, then it's a lie. Right, the greatest hoax in human history was Allah putting Judas on the cross and making it look like Jesus. Right? W wouldn't that be the greatest hoax in human history? Yeah. How many billions of Christians have believed that Jesus Christ was crucified and Islam shows up and tells us it wasn't? So that was to me evident, as you just said, and that's how I feel as well as you feel. I will never deny, by the grace of God, I will never deny what I've experienced, what I've seen, what I've heard and who God has revealed himself to be. And by the way, today, when, when, when Western missionaries are telling us, former Muslims, that look, oh the way goodness. we're gonna reach Muslims is we're gonna change our, our Bibles and we're gonna, we're gonna put the term Allah in for our Heavenly Father. Oh, by the way, don't tell Muslims that God is Father, that just confuses them. Can I tell you that on day three, even my lukewarm Muslim father, when he found out that I became a Christian, he disowned me. And for a number of years, he disowned me. And can I tell you that on day three of being a baby Christian, God was my father. Amen. When my, er my earthly dad disowned me, when my earthly family, to this day, I have no relationship with my, my parents of the past, but I have no relationship with my brother and sister. I am literally the lone sheep of the family, mm -hmm. but I know that God became my father. So this is nonsense what we're doing. In, 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 in placating, uh, there is no power in what we present. It is so important to be able to stick to what the Bible teaches us. And Absolutely. for you, brother, for you, for your testimony, for my testimony, um, and, and I love your testimony. And, and, and that's why I was telling you that I want to bring you to Minnesota with me because I feel that um, some of these lukewarm churches or maybe Christians are scared to actually engage Muslims there, they need to hear the testimony of what you went through um, because there is, there is, there is right now, there is no power in what they're doing. In Unfortunately. Placating. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Master, let me add something because you said something interesting about Judas being uh, uh, disguised as Jesus and put on the cross by Allah. Okay. So have that thought. I, uh, you know, we do street evangelism a whole lot in Middle mm -hmm. East among Muslims, and we come across all sorts of objections. Mm. I mean, you, glory to God, you name it, we come across it. And we record the majority of them because uh, after we come back 
from the street evangelism. We sit down with the team and we go through it. Mm. It's one of one day uh, I'm, I'm with my team going on the street. We're evangelizing. And this Muslim said, every person is responsible for their own sin. Huh. You cannot pay for someone else's sin. Interesting. I said, that's really good. So um, th that could be correct. But do you believe in the Quran? Oh, Alhamdulillah, I believe mm. in the Quran. Do you believe that the Quran is correct? Oh, I do. I said, uh, let's go to chapter four of the Quran. So we went to chapter Quran. We have the Quran, of course, on, on, on the app. Thank mm. God that they put it on the apps. It's on our phones. We went through and I showed him this verse that Allah replaced Jesus with someone else and yeah. put him on the cross. So yeah. I said, if Allah can do that, substitute someone to save his prophet. And as soon as this came out of my mouth, he was exposed because he yeah. heard the truth. If Allah could substitute somebody for Jesus, why cannot, why can he substitute Jesus for us? Yes. That was the end of that conversation. Wow. But I tell That's you, good. there is a lot of things. There is no common ground between Islam and Christianity. There, are, they, there is no common ground. You can, but because that is their authority as Muslims, they believe that that's their authority. I use their authority to expose their lies. Amen. What they have believed. But all of this is that when you have Christ, when you have the truth, you don't need to be equipped with nothing. You just need to tell them the truth Amen. what the Lord has done for him. I mean, we ask this simple question from hundreds, sometimes thousands of Muslims when we street evangelize them. We say, do you know what Jesus has done for you? Mm -hmm. And then they say they, know, they don't. Do you know what Muhammad has done for you? They say mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. Muhammad mm -hmm. has done nothing for him. Right. Muhammad said, oh, I think this is the way, or I think that's the way you should do this, that, and... I, Muhammad said, I don't even know what is going to happen to me. How can he help right. you, Muslim? Right. right. But then we give him the gospel because they don't have any ground to stand on. Right. And the beauty of Christianity is, and I know what, when you talk about the uh, lukewarm church or the Christians on the West, uh, the, the, um, the ones that they, um, they think Islam is something really pretty. Right. And, and, and then we just need to add Jesus to be the, uh, the cherry on the, on, the, on the top of the, the cake top. that they have. That's it. And it's going to be all happy, happy if they just add Jesus to it. Right, right. right. I mean, God forbid, if, G if Jesus was, was here, he would take that flag out and flag somebody. I mean. He, absolutely. Mohammed, you, we were talking about this before we went on air, that every former Muslim that you know or I know, Mm -hmm. uh, every former Muslim that I know that, that it, you know, has a true conversion, that you can test their conversion, um, gets to the point where they absolutely understand that they, they, they renounce Islam, they understand uh, how false Islam is, they understand that the, the Quran is, is, is demonically inspired, that it is an anti-Christ spirit because it denies the major tenets of Christ, of Christianity. This is in 1 John 2, 1 John 4, 2 John 7 through 11, where it says he who denies Jesus the Christ, he who denies Jesus came in the flesh, he who denies the Father and the Son, this is the spirit of Antichrist. Well, again, what do Muslims pray every day? They, they pray that Allah is not a father, nor is he a son. They pray. Anyway, so we've already covered that. But the, the point that I think is so powerful is that um, we know that there is a, 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 you have to get rid of the shackles. You have, to, you, have to, you have to throw off the dead weight and you throw off Islam. There is no, let me hang on to part of it. Let me, mm -hmm. let me, let me, let, let me do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Like, like you see in missions where they have the insider movement, where they're going overseas and telling Muslims, you can believe in Jesus and still stay a Muslim, stay within the mosque, do your daily prayers and tell people you're still a Muslim. No what? true converts, pastor. That's right. Around no true convert. Any Muslim, I mean, I know, glory to God, thousands of them. 
if you if it comes out of my mouth that you can be a Christian and a Muslim, or you can be a Christian and go to mosque, or you can be a Christian and participate in the work of darkness. It's like you can be a Christian and, and, and stay in adultery. That's the same weight for them. That's right. If I That's say right. that. That's right. Oh, you, you're a Christian. God, uh, uh, Jesus has forgiven your sins. Now you can live in sin. Go be, be an adulterous fornicator and a, a drunkard, whatever. It's, it's the same way. If I say that, and if I say you can be a Christian and a Muslim together, you can be a messianic Muslim. Yeah. You Woo. can you can go to you can go to mosque and stand in the line of the uh, the prayer and the in the in the Friday prayer and the Juma prayer and then but pray to Jesus. Right. They're gonna crucify me in about 30 seconds because right. they know this is absolute utter nonsense, craziness. You can these two do, do not mix. That's right. That's right. And that's Jehovah. brother, that's the no that yeah, exactly. Jehovah and and uh, I want you to, sh could you share, because we were talking about this, uh, uh, sorry, I don't mean to ask you the question, but but I was so- Pastor, this uh, is my I, show, remember? I know, I know, that's what I'm saying, it's your show, so sorry, I don't mean to ask you, but I, I was so, f I, I want people to hear what you had told me, because I was telling you the story of what just happened in Minnesota when I was there, and this, well, it's not even an argument, because you can't argue with, when someone doesn't even know the truth, because it's not a good argument, but- it's just foolishness. But I was talking to this pastor of this church that invited me to come, and I could tell that they were very compromised and very much in this kind of common ground because he was trying to tell me, oh, you know, Muslims believe in God as creator. Muslims believe in heaven and hell. We have a lot in common with them. And, uh, and he was arguing with me about the fact that Islam is Abrahamic, and he, he claims that it is. But he, one of the things was going back to the core of, of who Allah is and and this notion and um i was trying to communicate to him that um where did you learn where did you learn that it is acceptable for a christian to use the term allah to to describe the god of the bible because That's it's right. nowhere in the bible yeah. that there is any god associated with arabs so if their argument is that arabs go back to Ishmael, and since Muhammad was an Arab, then that makes bingo bongo, that makes, uh, makes Islam Abrahamic, even though we know the covenants are exactly opposite. You have the wrong son, you have the wrong location. Uh, the, 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 the Islam claims that, again, the Jews corrupted the Torah. So, but I said, so where did you learn this? And, and then he's talking about their, 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 their missions board and their missionaries and, and who they're promoting. And as you said, the contextualization with insider movement, Messianic Muslims, all of this uh, contextualization, interfaith, multi-faith, Abrahamic faith, all these things. But the question, he wouldn't answer my question. I said, show me evidence in the Bible mm -hmm. that anywhere in the Bible, any manuscript evidence in the Bible that it uses the term Allah for God. He says, well, but, but, Arab Christians, we know Arab Christians. I said, yeah, but none of them are former Muslims, Yeah. right? None of them have come out of Islam. You're talking to Christians who have been taught that it is permissible to use Allah for the God of the Bible. And you're talking about the fact that we have the earliest, the earliest, the earliest that the Bible was translated into Arabic is close to 900 AD. Mm -hmm. By this point, Islam has conquered, wiped out, wiped out uh, all of Arabia into Africa and is now up with, ha had been all the way up to France in 724 before they were pushed back by the Battle of Tours in France. Mm -hmm. They conquered. And so the, the influence of Islam on nations like Syria, Iraq, uh, Egypt, that were Christian, Ethiopia, that were Sudan, that were Christian, mm -hmm. that the gospel had gone out to, I said, show me, the ev show me any manuscript evidence before Islam, because you're talking post-Islam. Show me in the second century, third century, fourth century, where there is one, one Bible translation 
in the Aramaic or whatever that use the term Allah. It doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. Doesn't it exist. doesn't exist. Yet Voice of the Martyrs, yet uh, Wycliffe had a huge split when they were translating the Bibles over this issue of, mm -hmm. of whether we're going to use Allah as, God, as a name of the God of the Bible or not or take out the term Our Father. Uh, uh, I wrote the leadership of Voice of the Martyr several years ago when they came out and said it's completely acceptable to use Allah as a Christian, mm -hmm. as, a, uh, as a converted Christian. Um, I wrote uh, the head of the Southern Baptist Convention mm -hmm. when J.D. Greer came out as their former president and said that um, Allah is, uh, that, that Muslims know God, but they just have a different uh, understanding of who God is and Allah is acceptable. It is, so I, could you just, because you really blessed me with that story you were talking about. Um, and I just thought, man, like th I need to share that story. Like, I want, <laughs> I want you to share that story because, uh, you were talking about the Shahada and, and I just thought, um, uh, I, I, next time I'm, I need to remember that and let them know, uh, what the Shahada says. Absolutely. I, I just, yeah. Pastor, but I tell you the, the um, the, the generation that we live in, thank you, Jesus. Listen, Pastor, this generation that has gone through Islam knows who Allah is. They have seen all the atrocities, beheading, rape, murder in the name of Allah. And they're coming out of it to Christianity. Amen. This generation will change things. Amen. This army of ex-Muslims will change things pastor this is this is the the the, the way we were doing things uh, let's not rock the boat you cannot do it with ex-muslims they right. they are here to rock every boat amen even amen. The, the the boats of the christians that they've been sit, sitting in it comfortably they hear these testimonies, the cost of the salvation, the cost of following Christ, the cost of carrying your cross daily by laying your life. It is, your life is not so important. The life that you're trying to protect, you will lose. Jesus said it six times. You, if you try to protect it, you will. These, these Muslims that are converting to Christianity, they will know that. Amen. And then they will rock every boat, in comp in included with this Wycliffe, whatever, whoever is out there is trying to do that. Going back to the conversation into the Shahada. So as I told you, because we're hands-on uh, ministry, we, we actually a ministry that is involved in ministry. We have on our phone, every, every believer I train to do evangelism with us on the streets in Middle East, not in safe safety of america but in middle east they all have a folder called islam on their phones i show it to you here this is my phone and this is my islam folder let me mm. bring it here oh, hopefully mm. it's gonna yeah and then every one of us we have some verses some chapters some surahs some hadith saved on the screen here mm. 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 right here i'll show it to you when when somebody says oh allah oh allah is just another name for god Mm. Okay, mm. let's go to chapter uh, 3 of the Quran, verse 54. Makaru wa makarallah Allahu khayrul makarin. In Persia, in Arabic, it's makr is deception. We know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, don't need, you don't even need to, for a, for a Farsi speaking uh, Muslim, you don't need even to translate. You say, what is makr? What is makar? What is makarin? What is khair means? They already know that. So Allah, they deceived, Allah deceived. Allah is the greatest of deceivers. Greatest, khair, the chief deceiver. Now, you tell me, you're worshipping the chief of deceivers. Can you trust the deceiver? They're like, <gasps> they choke on it. Now, mm -hmm. when the pastors in America, the believers in America, they say, oh, Allah is, oh, you know more than the Quran? <laughs> right, right. Oh, Christian, you Christian in the West, you know more than Islam, the God of uh, Islam that wrote the, the, the Quran. You know more than that the Allah is the great deceiver. Chapter 3, verse 44. And then um, we, I, go, I take them to the Shahada. They say, no, there is no other word in Arabic other than Allah. 
Oh, really? La ilaha illa Allah. There is no God but Allah. There is two mentioned in this one verse, the most important pillar of Islam, the Shahada, testifying that there is no God but Allah. God, the generic word, specific is Allah. So there is a word for God in Arabic. Right. Why don't That's you right. use that when That's you right. translate? That's right. Why don't you That's use right. the word Allah, the word Rab, the word That's Yahweh right. That's for right. God? What is, uh, what is Allah? Because you're bound down to the God of Islam. That's right. That's and right. Uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite studies, it's the study of the names of the God of Islam because he has 99 names. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love this. Oh man, I can talk about this for a century. <laughs> but on our phone, Pastor, we, as, as you could see always, we have these slides uh, and I'll show it to you. He has, Allah has 99 names. In the first 10 names, there's two names that are very, um, uh, um, my favorites, if you would call it. But I give you five today, but it's two of them. It says, Allah is mutakabbir. Mm -hmm. Pastor, you're not Arab speaking, but what mutakabbir in Farsi means? Um, arrogant. Arrogant, yeah, yeah, prideful. Prideful, prideful yeah, very prideful. Allah is mutakabbir. Yeah. Allah is the prideful. Yeah. The arrogant. Oh. And then it says Allah is Zar, the distresser. Yeah. The model, the person that brings humiliation, mm. humiliates you. The mocker, the de the deceiver. Jabbar, the oppressor. Oppressor. These Afflicted, are the name yeah. of uh, the names yeah. of Allah. That's how I settle my case. Yeah. This you tell me is the God of Christianity when when Jesus said, "Come to me, who all labor and are heavy yeah. laden, and yeah. I give you rest because I'm humble." Yeah. Tell me if these two are the same. One says I'm the arrogant. One says I'm the humble. Amen. One is the humiliator, one is the humble. Amen. Hum humiliate. I mean, it is just beautiful. Beautiful. And when, when, when Muslims convert to Christianity and compare Christ, Yahweh, the Father, the truth, one says, I'm the great deceiver, Allah, says, I'm the great deceiver in the Quran. Not in some hadith or that you can dismiss it. In the Quran, he says, I'm the great, the chief of the deceivers. Now you tell me. Yeah. Christ says, I am the truth. Are they the same? Can you just somehow find a middle ground and, 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 and just maybe not? No, you can't. They That's are not right. the same. That's right. Praise it, the Lord. It, it, praise the Lord for that. Brother, praise the Lord for that. That is so good. And um, that's exactly what these Christians need to hear. Because those who are not uh, you know, going overseas, but yet they find it in their backyard. Like in where I was in Cedar Riverside, where you have now uh, the Islamic call of prayer being broadcast by the city council of Minneapolis five times a day over 20 city blocks. They would never allow church bells or, or, yes. or, or, or the Lord's Prayer, but yes. they're allowing this, this evil, demonic call. And I told this pastor, I said that, how many Muslims are you seeing come to Christ given none. this tactic? Yeah. None. Yeah. Pastor, there, there would be none. It, it, that, that, is, that is the key to this whole conversation. That's you right. can with a watered, with a watered down, sugar-coated, lazy christianity gospel you will not convert one muslim that's right that's but right stand the ground and i say this is this is the beauty of this movement pastor ex-muslims are the key amen amen in fact that's exactly what i said to him i said that i said that ex-muslims have been shut out like like my spiritual father who is in seattle uh pastor mark loriamini uh, Pastor Mark has been shut out. They, every year when he goes to mission festivals, and, and he used to be a keynote speaker. He used to be a, a prominent voice. And then as he stood up, 
to this deception that was coming in missions and, and, and in evangelizing Muslims, he got relegated bit by bit by bit to sidelines. And, oh, we'll, we'll make you a, just a, we'll give you one workshop. And then after that, he just, we'll give you a booth and you just come in there. Mm-hmm. And one, last year he, he calls me and says, uh, listen, uh, as I was setting up my booth, there was these young Christians setting up a booth uh, next to me. And the name of their ministry, Outreach to Muslim Ministry, was al Maide, from chapter 5 of the Quran. He said, do you know, have you read chapter 5 of the Quran? No. Do you know what this means? No, of course they haven't because they're ignorant. They've been told this. But he says, this is the name of your ministry to Muslims? Is chapter 5 of al Maide?" So, so, but now they've relegated him. And I, I, I pray in faith exactly what you said, that it's time that the Lord opens the door for ex-Muslims to get a seat at the table again and to be able to come in and bring the truth and bring power back. Because your testimony and my testimony, brother, as I said, for, for, for me to go along with common word, common ground, I have to deny my own testimony when the yes. Holy Spirit spoke to me. And says, Sharam, now you know the truth. One way is true. One way is a lie. There was nothing ever, ever, ever that was looking at how much we have in common. It was, it was completely the opposite. Renouncing one. Apostle Paul, one. Pastor Sharam puts it the best way. Kingdom of darkness and kingdom of light. That's right. Kingdom of God's beloved son. There are no middle ground in these two kingdoms right there are no uh let's mix them up as muslims we were operating under a curse in absolute and utter darkness and god came and to god sent his son jesus christ to come in the pit of that's hell right. and rescue us out that's of right. it that's right and plucked us out i mean that's the right. whole demonic sorcery witchcraft that exists in all of islam could not hold us down he just plucked us out of it amen and brought into the kingdom of his beloved son Son. he brought us into the presence of a holy god that he will not share his beautiful marvelous holiness with any other gods amen they don't mix that's right it's holy and unholy. There That's are right. no, let's just have both of them, have both That's ways. Right. And That's Muslims right. know that. And when you evangelize them, they know where you stand. Amen. If Amen. If you answer this uh, little, I, I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about you getting offended today. Yeah. They're going to abhor that. I That's come right. from a Muslim. I was trained by the revolutionary God, for God's sake. I was trained by the revolutionary God of Iran. I know we don't put up with this type of stuff, this weakness. Right. Like, let, we know where we were standing. If a Christian comes across bold and courageous, at least we, we respect that. That's right. They say, at least they know what they're talking. Even if they don't agree with it, they, ex- they at least they respect it. That's right. That's so, right. Um, I believe... The, the generation that is rising up, and I have interviewed a lot of them on this channel. Folks, it's a good time to subscribe to not miss any of these interviews. Amen. That is, that is the fact. I have Sunni Muslim from Saudi Arabia, uh, Shia Muslims from Iran, Shias from uh, Afghanistan, Sunnis from... They are coming to Lord, Pastor. Amen. And this Amen. army of ex-Muslim, you cannot stop them. They will not compromise. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And that's, I think, brother, that's why you see such power in how the Lord is using uh, that boldness uh, in other parts of the world. And the prayer is that, uh, you know, we would, um, you know, the Lord has burdened my heart also for America and for Canada and Western nations. And yet we see uh, that uh, Islam is is winning the day um because i've been in cedar riverside and we've gone to evangelize and within 20 minutes uh because they control power there they will 
put a call out and all of a sudden you're surrounded by 20, 30 uh, Somali men that are intimidating you and threatening you. Mm -hmm. And, and, and um, then it becomes very now volatile and dangerous and, and, and knowing that the, the, you know, the police there are not going to do anything to protect you. So this is their tactic because they have power and the churches need to understand that, as you said, the weakness of the God, uh, the, the, because really, what does the Bible say, right? Accursed you are when you preach a different gospel. When they are doing these things, it's a different gospel. So there's no power because it's a different gospel. And one more thing I would add to you, like you said, when Paul distinguishes between to have no fellowship with the works of darkness and there's, there's a separation, I'll go to this place of you have only two spirits. It's either the spirit of Christ or the spirit of Antichrist. The Bible is that clear that anything that does not worship the spirit of Christ is a spirit of Antichrist. It's against Christ. Mm -hmm. So whether it's Islam, whether it's Wiccanism, whether it's Mormonism, whether it's uh, 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 false theology and Christianity that teaches that, as you said, you can remain in your sins and, and be an adulterer, a blasphemer, a, 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 a drunkard, a homosexual, whatever, whatever it is, that spirit is working against the spirit of the Holy Spirit, you know, the spirit of Christ. Because mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit has come to do what? To testify to Christ. The Holy Spirit has come. The Spirit came to testify to the Son. The Son came to testify to the Father. <laughs> and so they testify to one another. One is not going to deny the other. Absolutely not. Holy Spirit is not going to come and engage in a lie. And, and, and that's, that was my argument with the whole insider movement. As I said, you're, you're telling these Muslims if they've actually genuinely accepted Christ. You're telling them to go and lie. How is that evidence of the Holy Spirit? But I love how you use just the simplicity of the things of the Quran, the, 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 uh, the names of Allah, for example, to expose that whole fraud. And I tell you, brother, I, I, I tell these American pastors and Christians that I do not know I do not know one former Muslim who uh, uses Allah or says Islam is Abrahamic and that we ultimately all can trace our lineage back to the same God. This is blasphemy, mm -hmm. ultimately, against the name of Yahweh. It is. When, 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 when the God of the Bible has given us the specificity of his name. It's like me saying, um, hey, guy. And you say, brother, my name is Muhammad. No, no, no. Hey, guy, I'm, I'm going to call you guy or I'm going to call you. No, but but I have a specific name and um, here we are. And so this is why I so love your ministry. I so love what you're doing. I'm so grateful for it. And we need that ministry in other parts of this country as well. And, and, and as I was telling you before, uh, somehow we got to get together together. Uh, over in places like Michigan and Minnesota, where we can then Absolutely. go on the ground and be able to put some fire <laughs> into the Christians, even if the churches, the pastors are, eh, you know, lukewarm. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to put fire in the Christians. So God Absolutely. bless you for what you're doing, brother. God bless. Thank you, you so much, Pastor, for accepting this invitation. And I believe this is. Uh... Uh, we should continue this conversation uh, and uh, be on this channel to do this because. Uh, there are plenty of people watching right now, and I believe thousands more will be, watch, will be watching this program. And this is very informative, very, very helpful to them. And I think um, the responsibility, um, God calls us out. God called Abraham yeah. out of Ur, which, is, um, um, which, which was the Persia. He called him out and said, Abraham, I will bless you. That you'll be, we, you will be a blessing to nations. And yeah. according to Galatians chapter 3, we are, seed, we are the seed of Abraham. And um, we have received the, the promises through what Christ has done. That's Christ right. is his seed, and we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Therefore, we inherit the promises. So God has called the, ex, the Muslims out of Islam. And now he has blessed us tremendously. Amen. The God of the Bible has blessed us 
tremendously. Pastor, you know it, I know it. Every ex-Muslim, every former post-Muslim, a former Muslim I have interviewed, they receive such amazing blessing from the Lord. Amen. That they have peace, they have, they have a hope, they have eternal life, they know God, God is, uh, they have a relation, vibrant relationship with the Lord. Amen. And, but that's not the end of our story. Right. We have to go back. We have to bless our nation. That's that right. is our responsibility. The, the, the Western church had a phenomenal, when, when, there, were, when there were no ex-Muslims, that was their responsibility to send missionaries. The church right. was powerful. But now it's our time. The That's church right. of Iran, the church of Afghanistan, the church of Saudi Arabia, they, those ex-Muslims that they have come out, that's our, it's our response. It's our burden Amen. for our That's people. Right. We That's know right. the language. We know we don't have all of this cross, cross culture, contextualization, go through all of these classes, get bombarded by information, buried. We don't all have that. We just know the language. We just know all the tricks that they, the, the Muslims have up their sleeves. Amen. Amen. We, know how, we don't need the answers for the most part. And on the top of all that, the Holy Spirit has equipped us. To do this, so um, this is a, this is my call for any uh, ex-Muslims that is watching this program. It's your time. Amen. It's your turn. Amen. Come out, I, Pastor. I have recorded hundreds, tens of comments on my videos. I'm ex-Muslim from Philippines. I'm ex-Muslim from Amen. Uh, Indonesia. I'm ex-Muslim from Kenya. I'm ex-Muslim from all over the world. Praise God. This is your time to come out come Praise out of the God. closet that's right that's right that's right. amen to that say it, say yes to the call of the lord on your amen. on your life accept the promises that was given to abraham accept it you have to acknowledge it first amen and let the philemon chapter there's one ver, one chapter verse six let the communication of your faith be made effectual effective by the acknowledge of Acknowledging of every good work that God has done through Christ in you. You have Amen. to acknowledge that, that your communication of faith, sharing of your faith, made effective. You have to acknowledge that. You have to come out of the closet, say, say yes to the Lord, and share it. You have done it. I have done it. And I know there, that army will be changing this Islamic world. It is a world. It is changing by God's grace. And it will be just this momentum is not never stopping and this is the the um, harvest amen last, the end time harvest that god was going to have from that's every right. nation every tongue and every tribe that's and right amen is the second that. coming is 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 evident evident that's right brother. very close very close yes amen to that pastor amen tell us that. how how people can get a hold of you and your ministry and then um um i believe that this conversation can continue on many other yes sir um, live shows Yes, sir. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity, brother. It's such a privilege to be on with you and uh, to be able to share, uh, but also just the uh, commonality when we see how the Holy Spirit works in, in us. It is such an encouragement. Uh, they can go to our website, uh, which is for truth and love. That's our ministry. So it's, it's just uh, T-I-L ministry.com. Uh, that's for truth it's and love. It's in the description T -I -L. also. Yes, sir. And uh, they want to be connected. And um, by the way, um, if, if they are concerned about their church, their mission organization, all that stuff, we do have a couple of documents on our website that we put together. Um, there's a tab that says, uh, say no to interfaith. And, and there's a document we produce for that. There's a document we produce of, you know, why Islam cannot be Abrahamic. But the bottom line is, um, I am so jealous for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am so jealous for his bride and I'm so jealous for seeing his people be equipped and as you said to fulfill and especially those who are coming out of islam um, praise god the lord will amplify their voice and that their voice will uh silence the voice of the deceivers um, as you said allah is the greatest of the deceivers and so those who are carrying that deception in these last days and so thank you uh, for praying for us, for praying for, of course, Muhammad. We're praying for your ministry and everything God's doing there. And as I said, I'll be in touch because um, after what happened again, this has been on my heart for a while, but we, we got we to gotta make this happen where we can go and equip the saints there because individual believers are telling me we have a heart 
to reach these Muslims, but our churches are not, or our churches are uh, confused. And um, we know that the, that the most important and only thing that will change the heart of that Muslim away from that false God, false religion, and the hatred and the evil that is there is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only thing that will ultimately change not only who they are, but their destiny and their eternity. How can we say we love Muslims if we won't give them the good news That's it. and risk offending them with the truth? That's what I was trying to share in my own story. The truth will offend, but it, it is there to set you free. It is there to break through. And praise God by God's grace that it broke through. And um, brother, thank you for your faithfulness to serve the Lord and look forward to being on with you again. Also having you on our show as well. And then, as I said, we'll, we'll, we'll put this together. I'll let you know and when we can get this together and make it happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Pastor. And folks, thank you for watching. God bless you. Make sure you share this uh, episode, this broadcast, this uh, live stream with many people, many uh, on, on a lot of social media platform. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. And um, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. We'll be back with more ex-Muslim 